Hello, this is Telecom TV. We're here in the Netherlands in The Hague at the SDN NFE World Congress and I'm talking with Domenico Convertino who is the Vice President Product Management Communications and Media Solutions at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Got it spot on right there. <laughs> Great Perfect, to see you. I would say. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Great to see you again. Let's begin with this. I'd like to talk to you about managing the evolution from NFE through to cloud native for a while. Do you think CSPs have spent too long on virtualization? Is it now time to look beyond NFV? But we need uh, to spend the time that is uh, needed to make things working fundamentally, right? So uh, everybody in, this, in the industry was hoping virtualization uh, to happen quicker than uh, what the reality has been, mm. but has been what has been. Today we need to, <coughs> to consider the heritage in terms uh, of uh, new skills, ability to manage different environments that has been acquired uh, by the industry and project these uh, into the future challenges that the new services that the industry has to provide to the, to the end customers are, uh, are putting on the table. Now, moving on, are these technologies which have been developed by and for the cloud providers, are they really suitable for CSPs or do you think they need to be adapted and changed? But these are technologies that are related to software first. So we have more and more software in the network, right? So yeah. this is the direction and it's not going to change. It's going to happen in that way. And once you have software there, the, the decomposition in microservices, the simplification of the complexity of each, of each network function is a something that is there to provide more agility and dynamicity to the, to the network uh, itself. So the, the requirement is uh, to have more flexibility on the network and this is just the technology that will al allow that to happen. Thank you, okay. Looking at the network itself now, how should cloud native technologies be incorporated into a CSP's network? Are there certain areas where it will be of more immediate benefit than others? At HP we are already uh, working, developing a cloud native 5G core. So all the 5G core network functions that we are developing today are developed from scratch according to the cloud native uh, paradigm, right? So for sure the, 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 what is uh, the, the, the effort that the industry is doing on standardizing 5G core is going to require cloud native in order to exploit the full benefit of the technology of the technology itself. So there for sure we have uh, an area where the cloud native will help. But even if uh, we move from the core to the edge, the edge today is uh, something that we can already deploy. We, we can already deploy in a very effective way. And at the moment we deploy at the edge containerized application the benefit of scales and the, simpli the simplicity on operating goes immediately up to the ceiling. So in reality, if we want to make examples, right, so 5G core is a good example, but even today, in the edge, we can have uh, uh, cloud native uh, applications that are, uh, that are really helping uh, uh, telcos on monetizing uh, faster. What will all this mean to the ecosystem, Domenico? Um, Will cloud native further open it up to other companies, building on the work done by NFV? And do you think this will cause integration issues? Already the fact that we are speaking about an ecosystem <laughs> is very different from the culture, the heritage that we are having from the past of this uh, industry where it was pretty much uh, a, uh, an operator vendor relationship that was uh, providing uh, the full stack of the services then uh, <coughs> then uh, uh, sold to the, to, the, to the end customers. Now, there is the need to have an ecosystem, yes. The ecosystem will be done of a very different, uh, of very different type of companies from the, 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 the usual one that the telcos have been used to deal with. So there are uh, a number of, uh, number of startups, especially in, uh, uh, today already at the edge, that are providing extremely interesting uh, type, uh, type of application. Just an example, the gaming. Uh, the gaming is a, is, a, is a huge opportunity and the players who are active in the, in the, in the gaming industry are not the usual uh, you know, uh, business partners of, uh, of the telco. In HP, our, uh, our job is to simplify the operational complexity, what you just said, because of course something that is much more distributed may become more complex to manage. The idea is that to continue to have uh, our usual DNA, 
to have uh, solutions that are multi-vendor, that are multi-technology, that are allowing uh, exactly the openness uh, and uh, the standardization of what is, uh, of, uh, what is deployed, uh, for sure will help uh, reducing uh, the operational complexity derived from, uh, from this new heterogeneous uh, landscape. So where are we today? Let's look at the picture right now. Look, we've still got the Etsy NFV ISG. We still have an admittedly repositioned OPNFV project. And we have a brand new common NFVI telco task force that has just been assembled. Do you think this is indicative of a healthy NFV community or a sign that it's falling behind? Because there's been criticism, we touched upon it at the very start, when we'd, the industry had hoped that NFV would produce positive benefits more quickly than it has done. And now people are saying it's taking, some people are t saying it's taking too long. What do you say to that? It's taking too long uh, <clears throat> because, again, uh, it's, a, it's a major technology transformation. It's not just a next G of, uh, of, a, legacy, of a legacy technology. It's the fact that we break through with decoupling uh, the hardware from, uh, from the software mm -hmm. in an industry where th that was uh, used to, to appliances, right? Uh, 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 and this takes time because I think... I think the assumptions at the beginning were not realistic in terms of velocity, again. So, and, uh, and this is one point. Now, where we are today, I think that more and more, uh, more, and more telco players are realizing that uh, if virtualization uh, is executed into simply keeping several silos and uh, virtual islands into their data center, vertical, by vendor or by network domain, etc., this is not going to help really the, the, the agility of the company and you know, the ability to react fast to the market demand. This is just probably helping uh, uh, some uh, cost saving that I think has been uh, achieved as well in the, in the, in the industry, reducing, uh, reducing the spending in, the, in network and infrastructure, but not much more than that. We know that there is more needed to attack the monetization part, to attack the revenue, to attack the top line, etc. So the standardization bodies, I think there are too many. <laughs> the point is that there are too many, uh, and uh, sometimes is even for us, you know, we are in the industry for ages now, right? So, but <laughs> even for us, it's complicated to understand why there is a differentiation, right? So it's just when you have a word and someone is uh, changing just as a, a single letter to demonstrate that is different from, uh, from the previous one. I mean, long story short, I think that the, the effort in this moment in the standardization bodies must be towards guaranteeing more simplification and more automation. We need less useless software, less proprietary software in the network. We need just what is needed to deliver service and we need to guarantee as much automation as possible in order exactly to lower that operational complexity that you were mentioning before. So we've touched on the present day, let's look forward a little bit, uh, a, a year or two at the moment. Who can see any further than next week, but still. It's obvious, Domenico, that we're going to be looking for some considerable time at a hybrid legacy slash NFV slash cloud native network. That is the reality, it will have to be that. Question is, do you think that CSPs will be able to manage it properly? The CSP are used to provide uh, very high business continuity. If you look at the type of uh, services and business that uh, they have been doing, so traditionally they, they, they are very good operating their, their, own, uh, their own business. Again, the, there is a, a further technological complexity that is coming in and this is the reason why the ones that will be able to manage this type of complexity will be exactly the telco that will increase dramatically the level of automation into their operational processes. So if you ask me, is it possible to manage that complexity with the actual processes and tools, etc., the answer is probably no. But I'm pretty sure that the industry will come out uh, with uh, and higher degree of automation that uh, will allow to, to win this, uh, this challenge. Well, perhaps we'll meet again this time next year or the year after, and then, yes, and then we, maybe, check, maybe we check this we recording. Do, we yeah. see what's <laughs> happened. In the meantime, Domenico Convertino, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.